today's challenge is to make a robot that follows a line. There's a line on the floor and we're going to see if you can make a robot that will travel along that line to the very end and be the fastest one to do so in your class. Can you build a robot that travels along that line the quickest? Let's see if you can. Here are some rules and tips. So we want it to follow the line, um, so it will start, and when it sees the white line, it's going to turn right a little bit. And then when it doesn't see the white line, it's going to turn left a little bit. And it's going to keep doing this as it goes along the line. The first thing you always need to do whenever you're moving a vehicle is to set the movement motors. So we need to tell the hub which ports the motors are plugged into that turn the wheels. So today we're going to plug the motors into C and D. You can choose whichever ones you like. And I'm going to plug the light sensor into port B today. I've already connected. I've already built my robot. You can tell up here. Two ways you can do it. The first way is pretty obvious. You can use if it sees a white line we can get it to do something okay and the other one we could use is based on the light reflection but we'll talk about that more in a minute we need to say if it sees something we want it to turn so if it sees a white line we want it to turn we're going to use this block here in the control section that says if then else if it sees the white line we want it to turn a little bit. And if it doesn't see the white line, we want it to turn the other way. I find it's easier to use these, ex these extra blocks down here. If you go to extensions and choose more movement, you will get some more blocks at the bottom here. More movement blocks. The cool thing about these ones is uh, that this one here allows you to control the speed of each motor individually. So, if it sees white, we could get it to t the motors just to turn a little bit more on one side than the other. 
I recommend a speed of about 40 and 30. So one wheel will spin at a speed of 40 and the other one will spin at a speed of 30, which means it'll start turning a little bit away from the line. Now in this if then else statement, if it sees white, it's gonna do this. But as it's doing that, it's gonna turn off the line so it won't see white anymore. So we need to grab another one of those blocks so it starts turning back. This block always needs to be the opposite of the previous block. So if it turns one way when it sees white and then when it doesn't see white, it's gonna start turning the other way. And that will work once, but we need it to do it over and over again. So go to the control tab and choose forever and make that whole section loop over and over again. So usually this will work. If you've got white tape on the ground, this will work. But sometimes it might be worth using reflected light instead of the color white. Go to your senses tab and choose the one that says B is reflection. If you look at my robot, when I put it on the white line, you'll see that now up here, it still says white, but if I change this to reflect, it shows you how much light it's seeing. It all depends on how high the sensor is off the ground, how you built your robot and the brightness of the tape and that sort of thing. But for my particular robot, when it's on the white, it's getting a reading of about 89, 90%. And when it's not on the white, it's getting a reading of about 62%. So in my code, I could safely say if it's more than 70, you have to make sure this is a greater than sign. If it's more than 70, then it should follow the white line. Let's see if that works. Yep. No worries, mate. Let's try it again. So this number here just has to be kind of in the middle of what you see when it's not on the white line and when it is on the white line. So mine on the white line is 90, not on the white line is around 60. So I see it about 70, you could say 75, you could even say 80. But the number should be about in the middle because when it's greater than a number in the middle, then it should move one way and when it's not greater than that number it'll go the other way so see i could try 80 and it will still work now there will always be errors with this and there will always be things that you need to experiment with because everyone's robot is different it depends a lot about how far apart your wheels are whether or not there are any turns in the line and that sort of thing but you might want to experiment with different speeds. You might want to go really slow. You might say 15 and 20, and then 20 and 15. Whatever you do to one block, you do to the other one, but you just make it the opposite, okay? This one always has to be the opposite to this one, doesn't it? And you might find that it, it works well fast. You might want to try something faster. Depends if you're going around corners or not. If you're going around corners, often it's better to go a bit slower. Whatever you do, don't give up. Keep pursuing. Something like this works, but it depends how you build your robot. It depends how you've wired it. it. depends if it goes forwards or backwards, which end your sensor's on, that sort of thing. So just experiment with the numbers and try and think to yourself, why isn't this working? Or how can I make it work better? It is time now to pause the video so the students can see the rules and the code. When I made my lines, I just use masking tape on the ground you can make one big line and it can have a few kinks in it and turns. Uh, sometimes if the angles are bigger than 90 degrees the car might struggle a bit. You can even close it so it's like a closed shape and the, the vehicle could do laps around it. You could even have obstacles along the path for children to lock over if you like or even checkpoints for them to reach. But that's it, you just need masking tape. At the bottom of the description there's also an opportunity for you to click on some links and work out how you want to score. If you want to score there's also some um, student reflection evaluation sheets and there's also uh, a little Google sheet there where you can 
um, enter student scores. You can actually evaluate them during the activity if you really want to. You don't have to do any of those things, but there's some handy links in the description. Make sure you check them out and check out my other videos. This is one of my more popular videos. It's a classic.